Hey guys, made it to the Panathenaic Stadium here in Athens. It's an amazing place to be, even from the outside. We haven't gone in just yet, or we're about to. This is a place in Athens that's an absolute must. There are some places that obviously you're gonna be able to look over. This isn't one of those places, along with the Acropolis and other places we're gonna see in just a couple of days. This stadium was built in about 330 BC by the Athenians, mainly used as a racehorse track. Later on in about 150 AD, it was reconstructed by the Romans and it was turned into, uh, actually it was reconstructed by the Romans entirely out of marble. It's the only stadium in the entire world to be constructed entirely out of marble. At that time, it was uh, able to accommodate about 50,000 spectators, which even by today's standard is a lot of people. So this, this uh, stadium, even by today's standards, imagining how old it is, is an amazing sight to, to to come to and to just experience for yourselves. Later on in the 1800s, about 1869, it was excavated and it was actually host, it hosted several of the modern Olympic games, including as recently as 2004. So we're about to go in. I think you have to pay a small fee to get inside, uh, maybe about five or 10 euro. Uh, you could actually go inside the stadium and walk around. So that's what we're about to do. We're about to check it out for ourselves. Staying in a good hotel that's near the Acropolis, if that's something that you want to see, it's going to make things super convenient for you. My hotel is literally a 10 minute walk. Uh, some of it, in fact, I'd say most of it, you have a view of the Acropolis as you're walking towards um, Plata. So picking where you're going to be staying is going to be very vital in, in determining what kind of experience you have. So we're almost there. <laughs> Made it. Well, hello, hello. <laughs> Carly, joining us again. Behind me here is the ancient Parthenon that sits atop the Acropolis. This is probably the most iconic monument in all of Greece. It was dedicated to the goddess Athena and construction of the Parthenon began in 447 BC. It is truly a testament to democracy and Western civilization. In the early 1460s, after the conquest of the Ottoman Empire, the Parthenon was converted into a mosque. This structure has functioned as a treasury, a church, a temple, and even as a military outpost due to its advantageous position atop the Acropolis. In 1687, during the Venetian siege, the Parthenon was severely damaged and a section of the structure was destroyed, along with many of the treasures inside. Most of the Parthenon still exists today, however, and restoration efforts have sought to preserve what is left of this incredible structure. The Parthenon is rivaled only by a handful of other attractions around the globe in terms of its historical value, cultural influence, and overall archaeological significance. This is just a small section of the new Acropolis Museum in Athens. It was constructed specifically to house the archaeological remains 
of the Acropolis site and the Parthenon itself. I highly recommend visiting the museum before your visit to the Parthenon because it will give you great historical context and will help you make the most of your visit to the Parthenon and to the rest of the Acropolis. they speak no English you get what you get that day with the, or the chef is making so it is if you've done any research on Athens and places to go and eat in Athens I'm sure that this place has popped up on your radar we're about to head inside again if you haven't done any research on it um, it's got great reviews everyone that's been here whether they're locals or uh, tourists have talked told us about this place and this is what we're looking at from the front we're about to walk in together How is it? Wine already. It's already poured in some. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Turn it's All right. delicious. So we're starting off with some uh, bread. Okay. And whatever they bring us. Whatever they bring you? Whatever okay. they bring us. All right. Well, I'm going to head up there and uh, no English, so you just uh, you just tell them, hey, I'm one person? Or? The younger guy speaks a little English. The older okay. gentleman, not sure. So okay. He hasn't spoken to him. All right. Well, this is what it looks like, guys. Okay, so we just sat down. We actually came at the perfect time because uh, we actually got one of the last tables. We're, we uh, got here uh, at about it's about 2 p.m. or 2:30 in the afternoon, and it is just a little bit of a smaller place that I would have expected. But again, it is uh, something that's very unique and authentic and special. And again, the staff, although they don't speak a lot of English. They're very nice and very kind and very attentive, as you can see. And this is uh, what they brought us. It was dedicated to Hephaestus, an ancient god of fire, and Athena, goddess of pottery and crafts. According to archaeologists, the temple was built around 450 BC, as uh, the archaeologists are really unable to determine exactly when it was built. 
but it is one of the most, again, well-preserved temples in all of Greece. So this is an absolute must stop if you are coming to um, the ancient Agora, which you absolutely should be coming here if you are anywhere near the Acropolis. So it is only a few minutes from the Acropolis. Again, come here, it is our first stop. We're gonna walk around and check it out. So one more look at it. So we just climbed down from the Temple of Hephaestus and we are here just below the temple and they are actually telling us to leave. So it's a little bit difficult because uh, they close at eight, but it's about 7.10 and apparently they're already telling people to get out. So um, we are here and this area around us is the entire ancient Agora, okay? Agora in Greek means gathering place. And this is what we're looking at here. We're not gonna have time to explore everything, but we're gonna walk us around as much as we possibly can. And this was essentially a political, religious, a philosophical gathering place for the ancient Greeks, the ancient Athenians. And it is a place where you can experience so much history. It is, I didn't even realize how incredibly big this place was to walk around. You can spend hours here. So again, you can hear the whistling there. We're about to have to head out, but that's okay because we got to experience it and we got to see the Temple of Hephaestus and we're about to walk around as much as we possibly can before they kick us out. So we'll see you on the outside. Tatiana wasn't something we planned before the trip. I'm so glad we made the decision to book the tour with her last minute. This wasn't just a food tour, although that was a big part of the four hours we spent with her. Tatiana has a background in drama, literature, history, and has an intimate knowledge of Greek culture. She shared this with us in a way that made the experience unique and authentic. The tour included stopping at several historical sites, where Tatiana graciously provided us with the historical and cultural significance of each location. This was so unexpected, but in a good way, of course. Had it not been for this tour, we likely would have walked right past many of these sites without realizing what we were missing out on. The tour was a 10 out of 10, and as Tete Helena put it, it gave us a deeper appreciation for the Greek way of life. So, is there anything you'd like to say to anyone trying to take this tour? I want to say welcome to Greece, and we're waiting for you here in Greece to experience the Greek way of life.
So when we arrived in Mykonos, we discovered that Ubers and Lyfts were not a thing. This meant we would have either had to depend on costly taxis, which were in high demand, or option B was renting these mopeds. These mopeds costed us 30 euro a day and it was well worth it. We only had two days in Mykonos, so this allowed us to maximize our time and allowed us to see the entire island and hit all the places we had on our itinerary. So if you're limited on time in Mykonos and you only have two or three days, this is a great option and it gives you freedom and it allows you to go places that you wouldn't even think to go if you were in a taxi or taking a bus. So definitely take advantage of it and rent a moped if you're in Mykonos. Jet skis, Mykonos. That's right. Okay. And it's beautiful, clear water. something out of Greek mythology because the Greeks viewed this as the birthplace of Apollo and this was for so long such a holy place for them and to be here now and to just walk through it with no one else here is just an amazing opportunity so to not come here if you are in Mykonos is just losing out you have to come here and experience it So there's so much to cover on this uh, on this trip to Delos. Unfortunately, we only have 45 minutes to do it, but that's enough time to at least come see three or four places here on the island uh, if you are moving with a good pace. And you can obviously take more time depending on who you're booking this through, but come here at least for the time we have for at least a 45 minute stop if you're in Mykonos. It is about 5 a.m. here on the second to last day on our Greece trip. So for the second to last day, we planned a trip to Meteora, which if you just Google it or do a tiny little bit of research on it, you're, it's probably going to be very recognizable to you. It's essentially several uh, Eastern Orthodox monasteries that 
are literally in the sides of these cliffs. And it is just so incredibly beautiful, whether you're there for the history or just for the views. It is something that if you have an extra day in Greece, if you have an extra day mainly in Athens, you should probably take advantage of going there because it is something that the locals here have all said, hey, if you have an extra, extra time, go see this place. So it's about a three hour train ride. Uh, that's probably gonna be the most convenient way to get there. Uh, between three and four hours, I believe. We're about to head out, ours leaves at seven. So it's an all day thing. So if you actually book a guide um, or book an actual tour, which is probably gonna be the easiest way to, to go about it, unless you're super familiar or staying somewhere conveniently located, it's gonna be an all day trip. So we'll see you very soon, can't wait. So again guys, wrapping up the Meteora trip. It has been amazing, it's been a four hour uh, tour. And again, the guided trip is definitely the way to go. This is a UNESCO protected World Heritage Site. It is extremely important on so many levels when it comes to Greek culture, when it comes to the Greek Orthodox Church, if, when it comes to the history of the monks and the hermits that were that lived here uh, throughout the centuries and to be able to go into these churches these chapels these monasteries and see how they lived and see the incredible lengths to which they were willing to go just to be able to build these monasteries and how dedicated they were to their faith and are to their faith for the monks that still live here it's absolutely incredible so get out here and check it out for yourself Woo! <laughs>